ce soir. Merci beaucoup. Merci à tous. Oui. Alors, je suis vraiment navrée pour certains qui ne maîtrisent pas du tout, mais je vais m'exprimer en anglais à partir de maintenant. Et en fait, euh, j'ai prévu quand même des supports visuels qui vont vous permettre de comprendre mes propos, que vous compreniez ou pas la langue anglaise. Donc je pense que les, les supports seront suffisamment explicites. Il y a aussi, j'ai choisi des termes très transparents, de façon à ce que les plus courageux qui restent puissent réellement apprécier les connaissances qui vous seront données maintenant. So now, now, I will present you nine facts you don't know about the greatness of Africa. I'm waiting just a minute for the silence, please. Thank you very much. Before that, I recommend you this book. This book is my Bible. What's, what you call Bible, this is this book for me. And the title is When We Ruled. The writer is Robin Walker. He is a great researcher. He's an African researcher living in England, in London, and he works. All right. um. He works on black history, on the history of Africa. So this is the book to know all everything about the black greatness in Africa, from the very ancient origins to now. So please, I ask you to be silent and respectful and to respect the people who are interested, please. Can you turn off slightly the light, please, so people can really appreciate the, the pictures? So let's go. I will present you nine things you don't know about the greatness of Africa, okay? Because the African continent is well known for its Egyptian pyramids, its safaris, and its long distance race champions. That's pretty much the only positive things the world knows about Africa. Otherwise, the media highly focus on negative aspects, such as starvation, poverty, disease, corruption, and war. Today, it's my pleasure to present you a few facts that TV never show, so you can build a more balanced perception of Africa. I must start with the nature, since it's the most precious treasure of our world. I'm sure you have heard hundreds of times about deserts and wild animals of Africa. But did you know that Africa counts thousands and thousands crystal clear rivers, astonishing waterfalls, huge lakes, and heavenly beaches? So let's see what I'm talking about. This is Gare Gare waterfalls in Kenya. We waterfalls in Ghana. Kilesi waterfalls in Guinea. Kalandula Falls in Angola. Storms River in South Africa. Blyde River Canyon still in South Africa. Malawi Lake in Mozambique, Tanzania, and Malawi. Those three countries share the same lake. Memba Island in Zanzibar. Lamu Island in Kenya. A beach in Gambia. 
Azura Island in Mozambique, Likoma Island in Malawi, Lumun Lodge in Ghana. Have you ever seen these pictures before? Most of the time, you see war, desert, poor villages, uh, dust, and ugliness. Africa is everything but ugliness. Africa is about beautiful, okay? And we need to know more about these places. Africa is a fabulous destination to relax and to discover natural wonders, but Africa has also developed and sophisticated cities that are never shown on TV, okay? Most of the time, I repeat, the media shows small dusty villages without light and concrete roads. But guess what? What African countries has more than tribal villages and poor people? So look at this. This is the capital of Angola. Okay? Developed, sophisticated. Abidjan in Ivory Coast. Nairobi, the capital of Kenya also. Have you seen this before? Dar es Salaam in Ethiopia and Addis Abeba in Ethiopia too. Harare in Zimbabwe. Trust me, Africa has great cities, very developed more developed than most of the city in France or in Europe. There is a last thing you need to know about the African continent, nature. It is one of the best places to ski. Do you know that? Africa counts 75 mountains and several of them go higher than 5,000 meters. The most famous is the Kilimanjaro, 5,895 meters high. Many different ski stations exist in Africa. The most famous are Africa Ski, Afri Ski, sorry, in Lesotho, and Tifindel in South Africa. So now you know you can ski in Africa, okay? Amazing. This is not a joke. You can check, and I invite you to check at home, okay? You go on Google, and you type Afriski, you type Tifindel, and you will find them, okay? Afriski. Tiffindel, go check the pictures, go check the websites of the hotels, go check the activities around snow, and you will be surprised because media never show that. This is not a joke. There is one fact about Africa that will surprise you even more. The continent is way bigger than you think. At school, the words map and the globe show us a wrong size of the continent. Europe and the United States are represented much bigger than their real size. And Africa, India, and South America are represented smaller than their real size. All the maps and the globes that you know are based on the Mercator projection, Mercator. 
Mercator projection was created in the 16th century. The Western countries are shown in bigger proportion to express their power and importance. You can see the differences between Mercator projection in blue and the Peters protection projection sorry, in green. In the 19th century, the Peters projection was elaborated based on new technology and accurate calculations. The Peters projection reveals that the continent, the African continent, is so wide that it can receive many countries of the world. It can receive France, England, Ireland, Scotland, Spain, Germany, Italy, Greece, Sweden, Norway, the United States, Mexico, Peru, New Zealand, India, Nepal, Bangladesh, China, and Japan. All of them can fit inside the African continent at the same time. You can check this also anywhere on internet or in books, okay? The Mercator projection is wrong. Mark Doyle, a BBC journalist, published this true in 2013. But four years later, nothing has been done to replace the maps and the globes in schools. So our children are still learning wrong informations. Please do not believe what I'm telling you. When you go home, go check. And spread the real map around you because we need to stop believing in lies. Now let's talk about the great empires and kingdoms that ruled Africa before. A lot of remains are still there and you can visit them, so take your pen and write the things to add on your to-do list, okay? Do you know that the Great Wall of Bena, do you know this wall? It is called the Great Wall of Bena. It was, it is still um, the largest man-made structure of the world. It was built in 800 and the powerful kingdom, kingdom of Bena built a 16 kilometers wall. It was four times, four times longer than the Great Wall of China. It was built to protect the, to protect the kingdom. The specialists say that it is the largest archaeological phenomenon on the planet and it is in Bena, in Africa. Unfortunately, it was massively destroyed by the British army in 1897. A few remains can be seen in, Nar in Nigeria, nearby the region of Edo. Before the European invaders arrived in Africa, the kingdoms and empires were very well structured and developed. This is the case of Luango, the capital of the Congo Empire. Luango was organized, clean, and prosperous. The people used to wear elegant clothes and elaborated hairstyles, just like you, you have seen tonight. The drawing you see was made in 1591, when the first European, a Dutch man, discovered the city. He witnessed that he was completely astonished by the size of the city. He had never seen such a large town anywhere in Europe. Thousands of people were living there peacefully. 
The palace was very fine and its architecture was impressive. It was smelling good thanks to the flowers which were precisely selected. The Congo people and the emperor were very hygienic. They used soap, they cleaned their teeth, they washed their clothes regularly. It seems pointless to mention that, but at the same time, at the exact same time, in Europe, the kings and their people did not take showers more than twice a year. They never brush their, their teeth and they barely comb their hair. They used to live with cootie. They developed skin problems and they used to lose their teeth very young. So this Dutch explorer also witnessed that the empire was governed very wisely. No war, no jails, no prostitution, no drugs no expensive tax. And the Dutchman saw gold everywhere, jewelry or decoration of the palace. He was amazed. We really need to understand that before the invasion of the Europeans, the Africans were great. They started becoming poor, weak, and uneducated because of the massive dehumanization they suffered for centuries. Now, did you know that Africa had fortified castles and fortresses? Some remains are still visible in Ethiopia. It was built in the 17th century in the city of Gondar by the black emperor of the time, Facilides. The castle was named Fasil Gebi. You can check. Other incredible remains of Ethiopia are located in the city of Lalibela. These are one of the greatest mysteries of the world. Eleven churches directly curved in the mountain those 11 churches are cut in the rock, and no specialist can say how the kingdom of Ethiopia did, did this in the 12th century without machine or modern tools. And another mystery is that every church is connected by tunnels also carved in the mountains. How the Ethiopi Ethiopian people succeeded to orient the tunnels while they were cutting the rock inside the mountains, and how long the construction work took. Mystery. The African kingdoms had knowledge which were destroyed, and now it's almost impossible for us to reproduce their great accomplishments. Another great empire was Monoma Monomotapa. This empire was founded by the Shona people and it used to cover the current Zimbabwe and Mozambique. The city of Great Zimbabwe was the capital of this empire. Some remains of the capital are still visible. The empire existed between the 11th century and the 15th centuries, four centuries. And it was very rich thanks to its numerous gold mines. The city you can observe on the pictures is the Great Zimbabwe. It was the capital. It used to have 18 people living there, 18,000 people. And guess what? All the walls were built with rock only, no mortar. So the architects of the time succeeded to calculate the right angles 
and to cut the rock precisely so they can fit perfectly. Another mystery, just like the Great Pyramids. Now you know that there are not only the Great Pyramids to visit in Africa. The last kingdom I present you today is Meroe in current Sudan. It was called Kush Kingdom. Do you know that Ethiopian, Egyptians sorry, were not the only people to build pyramids in Africa? More than 200 pyramids were discovered by scientists in Meroe, an ancient city of the Kush Kingdom. The Kushit used to be very powerful and highly developed. They even conquered the, 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 the ancient Egyptians. To show you the power of this nation, let me tell you about the queen, Amani Shaketu. She was ruling the Kush kingdom when the Roman Empire August tried to invade her territory. Not only she smashed the Roman army, which was three times more important than hers, but she also chased them until the Egyptian frontier. The Romans never tried to attack her anymore. And after this remarkable victory, the Kush kingdom remained prosperous for hundreds of years, hundreds of years. The queen Amani Shaketo was buried in a huge pyramid of 3,700 meters among priceless treasures. Unfortunately, in the 19th century, an Italian rooted her pyramid and robbed all her treasure. He also destroyed her pyramid and now you can see some of her treasure in the museums of Munich and Berlin. Do you know that Africa had an army of women and they were terrible? Bold and fierce, they did not fear pain and bullets. Initially, they were elephant hunters in the kingdom of Daomi. Now this is called Benin. But they were so skilled in the use of weapons that the king decided to convert them into an army. They were called the Minos, and Minos means mummy, mother. So they reached the number of 6,000 and when the French army came to invade the Daomi, they struggled to death. Even if the French had more powerful weapons, they continued fighting and they never gave up. The most famous leader of the, the Minos was Sedong Hongbei. She was taught art of war and military strategy since her childhood. In 1892, she led the Minas for the last fight against the French army. Colonel Dodds of the French army witnessed that even if he won the war, he admired the discipline and the resistance of the Minas. Sedong Ongbe and her woman war warrior acted like kamikaze. They sacrificed their lives knowing they had no chance to win due to the high number of French soldiers and their guns. These women were remarkable, but they were not on the only case of African women involved in war. We can mention Queen Amina of the Zazo Kingdom, now called Nigeria. She led an army of 20,000 warriors, and she ruled a huge and rich kingdom. Until now, Nigerian people honor Queen Amina as the greatest warrior of their history. Now, do you know that the first declaration, declaration of human rights was African? Sunjata Keita, 
the founder of the Mali Empire, was against slavery. So he established the proclamation of the Mandan in, in, sorry, in 1222. This proclamation is the first in the human history to ban slavery and to guarantee freedom, respect of human life, equality, and justice for all, no matter the ethnic origins, the social status, or the financial situation. This proclamation had seven chapters and 44 articles. One of the article mentioned, no life is above another. Every December 10th, France celebrates the Universal Declaration of Human Rights adopted in 1948 by the United Nations, 726 years after the declaration of the Emperor Sunjata Keita. So I invite you to research all the articles of the pro proclamation of the Mandan and to celebrate it each year on December 10th. If you are a teacher, then study it with your class. If you are a parent, then write it with your children and learn a few articles. You can also select some excerpts and post it on your social network. We must let the world know that the African societies were all about love and respect before their destruction. Now, very interesting. Let's talk about treasure and legacy. So, the, Moor, the Moors were a well-structured and highly advanced black society in Africa. They taught so many things to Europeans that we can say that Europeans were the disciples and the Moors, the black Moors, were the masters. Just like ancient Greeks were the disciples of ancient Egyptians a few millennials before. The Moors were very educated. They mastered many fields from music to medicine and architecture. They arrived in Europe in 711 and they settled in Spain because it was very close to Africa. At this time, 19% of the Europeans could not read, including rich people and kings. Only a few members of the church could read and write in order to spread the Bible knowledge. The Moors built free schools and hundreds of libraries. So thanks to them, more Europeans were able to read and write. The Moors also taught the Europeans to change clothes regularly and to use soap, hot water, and alcohol for our hygienic purpose. These new habits contributed to decrease the disease. The Moors taught the Europeans to separate the place where they live from the place where animals live. Before that, that's true. Pigs, cows, goats, and chickens used to stay in the house with European people where they eat and sleep. So this lifestyle provoked many diseases such as measles and chicken pots. The Moors were very fine. They used to wear elegant clothes, rich fabrics, and precious jewelry. They were highly estimated by the Europeans, and many of them received honors and became knights, or even saints, like Benoit Le Mort, 
He became a saint from the Pope. Now, this painting shows a daily life scene of the 18th, sorry, of the 16th century in Lisbon, Portugal. You can see that racism did not exist yet. The Moors are portrayed dancing with white people or riding an expensive horse with rich clothes. They were completely accepted by the population. And the Moors brought also new instruments like drums, horns, lute, xylophone, and harp. In fact, a lot of modern instruments used in Europe nowadays come from the Moors, the Black Moors. For example, the trumpet is an evolution of the horn, and the guitar comes from the lute, and the piano is a sloping harp with keys. The, Moor built, the Moors built the first conservatory school of Europe in Valence in Spain. There are the father the fathers of the classical music. Thanks to Bach, Mozart, and others, classical music was finally identified as European, but it is just a recent appropriation, just like the theorems of Pythagore and Thales, of the tales of Jean de La Fontaine, or the songs of Elvis Presley. I'm sorry, there is too much noise. It's disturbing. Excusez-moi, ceux qui entendent, il y a beaucoup de bruit de l'autre côté, ça dérange, merci. Thank you. So I was saying that um, Western people master the art of taking knowledge or skills from the Africans and make it theirs. The Moors helped the Europeans to develop architecture, medicine, surgery, agriculture, clothing, and constructions of roads. Now, do you know that long time before Egyptians, Africans were already brilliant. The Telem were a prehistoric people. So far, they are one of the most ancient civilizations of Africa. As prehistoric they were, they already mastered the building of houses. They also chose very wisely the location of their homes. They settled in the Bandiagara Mountains in Mali to enjoy cool temperature and shadow. It was also a strategic position to see the danger coming from far. They also built granaries where they stocked fruits. These granaries were made with mud of termitary, so they stayed fresh and kept the fruit safe a long time. So early in history and so brilliant, now, very interesting, do you know her? No. Do you know her name? No? Okay. Since the Telem people, things have changed, and now we need money to build houses. And talking about money, this woman is the richest black woman of the world. She is African. Did you know that? <laughs> it used to be the American actress and TV host Oprah Winfrey, but since a few years, a Nigerian businesswoman, her name is Folorunsho Alakija, she took the first place. She is now the richest black woman of the world. Her worth is estimated around three billion dollars, trois milliards. Three billion dollars. Her past is very inspiring because she was not born rich. Her father had eight wives and 52 children. 
so she was not spoiled. She started as her she started her professional career as a secretary in a bank. And finally, she decided to invest in oil field that nobody wanted. And guess what? She found a billion dollar well. So now, Florun Show al is considered as an example of boldness and perseverance. And guess what? She succeeded to build a balanced family life also. She is married since 41 years with her, with her husband, and they have four sons. And the sons are ruling her society now. So the wealth is still in the family and stay in the family. And the last thing you maybe don't know about Africa, the, the African genius is still alive. People talk so much about ancient Egyptians than we think that we are not genius anymore. The genius is still there, it's still here, now. So Africa does not only count people rich in money, it has people rich in intelligence and resourcefulness. Two examples of the African genius are alive. William Kamkwamba and John Maggio. The story of William Kamkwamba is fasc fascinating. Do you see him? He was 14 years old when he built a five meters windmill, five meters high, alone to produce electricity in his village. His village had no electricity, no running water, no internet, no telephone, nothing. He decided to, to build alone what you see this, this machine, to produce electricity thanks to the wind. Another example fascinated is John Majiro. He was very young when he made a hydroelectric power station to produce electricity in his village in Kenya. Sorry, I did not mention, but William Kamkwamba was in Malawi and John Majiro was in Kenya. He succeeded to use water. He made a machine using water of the river to produce electricity for his village with no school, no help, no money, okay? Just with this, his brain, his intelligence. So, here we are, I presented you nine great things of Africa. What's the point? The point of this presentation is to make you realize that you are great because you come from great people. Our ancestors were great, and even if it is denied in the media, even if it is hidden at school, even if some people scorn us, this greatness is written in our genes. From the moment we realize that we are valuable, we will explode our skills and we will become unite and great again. I'm very optimistic for 2018 and the years following because I know that each of you will make his part or her part and we will grow wiser and stronger until the moment we truly conquer our mental and social freedom. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Safia.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, this is one is better. All right. <laughs> you aren't tired, right? I mean, what are you still doing there? Look at the time. You ain't, you ain't, ain't, you ain't hungry? Ah. You're eating knowledge. So this is what we call soul food. Thank you very much. All right. Can I have a little bit more light, Romeo, please? I would love to thank a few people before we call it a day. Okay, let me, let me just give you a hint. When you say, let's call it a day, it means we're going to finish. We're going to go back home. When you say, let's call it a day. Did you not put your hands up if you knew that? Okay, let's call it a day. Okay, so before we call it a day, we're going to acknowledge a few people. So I'm going to first again acknowledge Safia, enjoy life. Coming all the way from French Guyana with her heart. Yes, you can stand up. Because, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Very good, very good. Um, can I have um, Frederick? Frederick and his staff. Yeah, you come in? Yeah, uh, you can stay? You stay there? I don't know, because some people are standing up, so I'm, 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 I was wondering if it was not disturbing the filming, but if it's okay. All right. Um, I'm going to thank... I'm going to thank... Mr. Omotunde, where is he? You want to say something? In English. A few words in English. If it's not in English, we, we, we just don't say it. So, <laughs> no, I think that it was a very great night for us to discover our history in English. Yannick, you are a genius. That's important. Never forget that. And it's a good event, but we will do it also in Pognol. Otep. <laughs> thank you very much. I want to thank... Miska, please, where is she? Yes. Can someone go and call Miska for me, please? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for coming tonight, and um, I'm very happy um, to promote our culture, our history in this context, and thank you for staying yeah. here. Thank you. All right. Um, next person is actually next people, IMLC staff. So I don't know if Sandra is still there, but if you are there, Sandra, can you just come forward because uh, the others have left already because we are open tomorrow, 8 o'clock, all right? So I want to thank Lucina, Florence, Sandra. Oh. 
Oh, Sandra is still there. You can come forward, please. Yes, come. I'm going to give you the microphone to say a brief word. No? All right. No problem. Just, just stay there. All right. Good. Let's go ahead and thank Mrs. Not Miss. Mrs. Lesiva. <laughs> Mrs. Catherine Lesiva. I know she is there. She cannot not be there because she is um, the um, director of Remine Souta's center. Mrs. Lasiva. Catherine. Catherine. Someone went. Yeah, actually. <laughs> Oh, here she is. Okay, thank you very much. No problem. I want to thank our general director for this event. Her name is Sabine. Sabine. Thank you very much, Sabine. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You want to say something? I know you want to say something, but before you, I have to say, you know, she is what we call in French régisseuse, all right? The first person she had to manage is me. Me, I met her yesterday, and from the first minutes, I start admiring her. And right now, tonight, I admire her even more when I see the result, when I see how serious and rigorous she is. To me, she is the real meaning of the power of the black woman. So you can applause her properly, please. Thank you for your work, because as you know, a man cannot do great things without woman, okay? And we can call your wife on that point, sorry. We can call, the, yeah, we can call her now because she is supporting you in this and she was with you in the shadow, but she was here tonight. Thank you very much. She was on the list, and she was actually right after Sabine, because Maina was directing all the decoration that you saw in the room. She is the one um, dealing with the decoration, and she also assisted Sabine. So please, Maina, can you come forward, please? You want to say something? All right. Okay, no problem. All right. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Peter Lee, I know he must be filming right now, but... Um, okay, he is actually processing for the shooting. So he is actually tonight's backstage video maker. All right. So let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Peter Lee. All right. Um, we also need to thank Taiwo because she was there at the very beginning at the reception to welcome the people. Taiwo. We also gonna thank Jenny. She was a member of the welcoming staff, Jenny. In the welcoming staff, you also had Kenji. Yeah, thank you very much. 
and another welcoming staff is Stephanie. Okay, very good. I want to thank Luke, or Luke, for the djembe. I want to thank Romeo for the light and sound. Romeo, can you come forward, please? Just a few seconds and then you will go back because this is important. Yes, you need to see him. All the other people before are not there. Um, is, is Stephanie there? No, they all left. All right. Um, Romeo, please, can you come forward? No? Yes. No? Oh, he doesn't want. Okay, no problem. You're shy. All right. Okay. Um, oh. Yes. Frederick. Imagines studio. Is it studio? Imagine studio for the filming tonight. Because, yeah. He, Frederick Coco is the owner of a company called Imagine's Studio. And tonight's conference, tonight's event, will actually be broadcasted later on the social networks and maybe on TV, why not? Because he's going to process and edit a very nice summary. And this is the reason why we didn't want people to film and take too much pictures because we have an official photographer and an official you know, filmmaker. And by the way, let me call Mike T. Pod for the <laughs> camera. The photographer is up there, yeah, Mike T. Thank you very much. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you get any uh, everything you wanted with um, all the the, specif the the special guests? You, you wanted some pictures and and some shoots with the. Um, you you. All right. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. Um, I also want to thank Magali Adelson and Axel Negwe because they helped Miska with the models and, and you know, with their walking down the alley, etc., etc. Because they are professional dancers and models themselves, okay? So you can give them a round of applause. Magali and Axel. Okay. Um, Joel, for the security, you saw him already. Yes, Joel. And I think he needs to stay outside, so he won't come. Um, um, now, we're also going to thank Mr. André Georges, you know, because he helped Maina with the decoration. We're also going to thank Gérard, Gérard, for his car, his pickup car, because without this, you wouldn't have... Um, got this decoration today. Um, we're also going to thank Lisa Vidil for the, um, for the, the, the ideas and the, yeah, the bamboos and everything. Um, we're going to thank also uh, Mrs. Gouffran. Okay. We're going to thank Fille du Soleil, du Soleil Shop. Yeah, you can give them a round of applause. You know this shop? No? Fille du Soleil Shop. Yeah. Java Shop. Java Shop. We are also going to thank Au Coeur d'Afrique Shop. Yeah, thank you very much. I must have forgotten some people because I'm not perfect. And I actually apologize already. I want to thank Jimmy Bro for being there. And all the people watching on his Facebook, this live video, trust me, we appreciate. And thank you for all your comments, because I'm sure you dropped many, many, many comments. So that's great. And thank you for what you are doing, what you've been doing for so many years, Jimmy.
Yes. Thank you very much to everybody here, and see you next time. Thank you very much.